grafts in periodontal regeneration. Allografts is nothing but grafts which is obtained from different individuals of the same species. So this allografts are generally used in two forms. Okay, the first one is FDBA and the second one is DFDBA. Meaning FDBA means freeze dried bone allograft and DFDBA means demineralized freeze dried bone allograft. So the FDBA in the early 1970s they started using this in uh, periodontal defects for the regeneration and DFDBA came into existence in 1975. So this FDBA works on the principle of osteoconduction, meaning it would just uh, present itself as a scaffold into which the cells would migrate and form new bone. Whereas the DFDBA works on the principle of both osteoconduction and osteoinduction, meaning this DFDBA will contain some bone inductive proteins which is called as BMPs which would induce the mesenchymal cells to form pre-osteoblast and osteoblast and then form new bone. The things which come to our mind when it comes to allografts is grafts obtained from different individuals is that is it sterile, is there any risk for disease transmission or uh, will it cause any immune response. So while procuring the allografts, the things which we have to keep in mind is that it should be sterile, the immunogenicity of the graft should be decreased. So these two properties have to be achieved by maintaining the physical integrity of the graft and the inductive proteins. So the first step in the procurement of allografts is that a donor screening has to be done. Okay. Uh, so we have to see if the donor had a good systemic health, was free from any infectious disease or malignancies. So the contraindications for bone tissue donation are as follows. Uh, any donor testing positive for HIV virus, testing positive for HCV, hepatitis C and hepatitis B virus, having any occult disease, uh, who are under high risk groups after medical testing and behavioral risk assessment. Uh, example evidence of any drug use and those who are positive for bacterial contamination. The graft is obtained within 12 hours of death of the donor. Usually the site preferred is the long bones and cortical bone is preferred when compared to the cancellous bone because it is known to contain a lot of bone inductive proteins like BMPs because the bone matrix is increased in case of cortical bone. Now coming to the steps involved in manufacturing and processing of allografts. So the first would be soft tissue stripping. That is the bone has to be stripped from all the soft tissues. Example muscle, tendon, ligament, everything has to be removed. And then the cortical bone will be cut into a particle size of 500 mu m to 5 mm. Then the graft will be immersed in 100% ethyl alcohol for 1 hour. This is done to remove fat and inactivate any viruses if present. Then the fourth step is that is a freeze dry. That is it will be frozen at minus 80 degrees Celsius for 1 to 2 weeks. This is actually done to actually interrupt and stop the degrading process of the bone. Then the cortical bone will be cut into a particle size of 250 to 700 mu m. So this is the ideal particle size uh, which is needed to promote osteogenesis. If the particle size is quite small and cut below 125 mu m, then it would actually activate a macrophage response and the graft could be rapidly resorbed. So this is why a particle size of 250 to 700 mu m is necessary. So the next step is decalcification with 0.6N hydrochloric acid. This is done to basically remove the calcium from the matrix and expose the bone inductive proteins that is bone morphogenic proteins or BMPs. So this step has to be followed uh, if you are preparing a DFDBA, if a demineralization process is required. Okay, then you would wash it with a sodium phosphate buffer. This is to remove the acid. Then you would refreeze it. So refreeze dry it only if the demineralization is done. Otherwise you can proceed with the ninth step which is 
sealing it in a vacuum uh, sealed glass container the two main concerns on the use of allografts is the antigenicity and the risk of disease transmission so first uh, let's see about the antigenicity uh, in humans the chromosome 6 uh, has the mxc complex which encodes the hla antigen every cell in a particular uh, person would have uh, this hla antigen on its surface uh, which actually uh, presents itself as a powerful stimulus for the tissue transplant rejection so here while you do the tissue processing all the cells in the donor bone tissue is dead and the antigenicity is decreased the next concern is the risk of disease transmission and this is taken care of by excluding uh, donors under high risk groups and testing the cadavers for any infections or malignancies and also treating it with chemical agents and strong acids to inactivate the virus thank you